hello, 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 welcome, welcome, welcome. This, of course, is your irregular podcast, and I mean that in many ways. Um, for prof- for everything in the world of professional wrestling, this is Total Markout. My name, of course, is the Geek King, the Cash Brew. And along with me, as always, is the Shawn Michaels to my Triple H in many respects. It is, of course... Steve Jones 313, a.k.a. Boss Caulfield. How are y'all doing? (laughs) How are y'all doing? Welcome to Total Markout, the most irregular podcast for all your wrestling needs, geek. We've got a good one today. Yeah, we have a fun one today. You know, previously we have done some fantasy booking. Uh, We did a WCW versus WWE dream card that went as long as every WrestleMania ever has. Um, As a matter of fact, I think we've just added another match to that episode. Um, <laughs> so we did that. We had a lot of fun doing that. It was a little difficult for Boss at times due to the um, the history not aspect of it, and Boss not being uh, well versed in a lot of WCW. Um, however, even though Boss is not necessarily well versed in the history of the WWE as far as far back as we're going today, he does have a grasp of what would be needed for this show. And yes. that, so let's just quickly say that you know you've seen the title and everything else, but today we are fantasy booking and we are doing the golden era, the federation years, if you will, versus the modern era of the WWE. It is 1984 to 1992, which is the official golden era dates according to WWE's own website, and it is the modern era, which is 2014 to 2021. Because yeah. everything before 2014, to, from about 07, was classed as the PG era. Yes. Um, once again, this is according to WWE's uh, data. Yes. So we're going to do eight shows. It's, we're, it's you know, it's pretty. It's the middle of summer, so where else are we going to do that? We're going to do that in SummerSlam. So eight matches at SummerSlam. Uh, and they could be any match types you wanted. You could have title matches on there as well, if you deemed it was going to happen. Now, you will see graphics popping up to show you illustrations of what we're going to do. I, I did them myself, so I hope you do enjoy them. Um, yeah. but, but we, as a podcast right now, we're just going to go through them and talk about what happened. First of all, though, Boss, yeah. how did you find this? Uh, honestly, it was more a case of who's getting cut <laughs> more wow. than who gets put in. Fair it's enough. like... Like it's like you and me talked about beforehand. It's mm. it's the emissions that are that sting. Um, no pun intended. But, no pun intended. <laughs> but um, I'm actually I was actually very happy with the card. Um, there were a few last minute changes which mm. were made like okay. at the, the eleventh hour, um, but for good reasons. Um, but yeah, I'm overall happy with this. Was a fun one. This was really really fun to do. Good good. I can say for myself, um, you know. This is right up my alley, you know, 1984 to 92. I was introduced to wrestling in 1991. So all the tapes I had as a kid were of the golden era, the Federation years. Um, and obviously still a huge fan today. So it was really something that came into my wheelhouse really easily. I mean, going, well, if I did that. But you are right. It's the omissions that I was surprised. And I have a glaring omission that I'm just going to put on here and get it out of the way right now. John Cena does not appear on my card. <laughs> I have a dream card and John Cena does not appear on it at all. <laughs> you know? Also, there is no woman wrestling on my card either. And that's quite frankly because in 84 and 92, there wasn't a great deal of women's wrestling talent to it you'd want to see on a dream card. But, uh, so that's, yeah, that's, that's my big omission that I was shocked at. And you know what? I didn't realise it until I actually read the card. <laughs> I went, yeah, that's the card, that's finalised, done. And I went, shit, where's Cena? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Now, as we said, we've got eight cards. We are going to do it in a show order. So, the idea that we did it a bit different this time is that we had eight matches. So, we decided that, well, I decided, because I came up with the rules of this, that we would do it in a show order. So, you would actually try and set up not just the matches you want to see, but how you'd want the show to flow. At least that's how, that was the idea. Basically, behind. the pay-per-view build. Yes, exactly. Um, so, Boss, why don't you start us yeah. off with your opening match? What kicks off uh, the show? What gets the crowd red hot? 
<laughs> I'll tell you what the fuck gets the crowd red hot. An elimination four-way for the WWE Universal Championship. Holy shit. Bret Hart, <laughs> Kevin Owens, 1992 The Undertaker, and Roman Reigns, your tribal chief. Interesting. That's a... They, I'll tell you what, that is a... That, 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 that's a fucking main event anywhere in the world. Um, yeah. <laughs> as the great Gwen yeah. Monsoon used to say, may not have been anywhere in the, in the country right now. <laughs> yeah. And I tell you now, the winner of that match is your tribal chief, Roman Reigns. Interesting. That's, I mean, it's a hell of a match, hell of a choice, and kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. Another one that I'm going to say right now, an omission for myself, is there is no Undertaker on my card either. Excuse me a moment. <laughs> Mainly for the reason being that, you know, in this period of time, they, you know, it wasn't, he was still building to be The Undertaker. And in the modern era, I didn't want part-time Taker. That's, that's not what it was. That's <clears throat> what, you know, because 2014, you know, is pretty much... We don't, we, we don't talk about 2014. Exactly. You know, WrestleMania 30 is 2014. No, there, that, no, that says no, enough no. about that. No, this, that was the year that WWE skipped a WrestleMania. It was. At least twenty yeah. minutes of the WrestleMania disappeared. From yeah, <laughs> it got the it got the black treatment, just like all just shadow. It's like Brock Lesnar was wrestling like a shadow. We don't know who. But no idea. Or right, what? Well, I tell you what, that's a that's a hard one to follow it, but I'm gonna try. All right. For my opening match, mm -hmm. is a fatal four way. Okay. Tag team match. Ooh. It is the Heart Foundation versus the New Day versus the Islanders, Tama and Haku versus Jimmy and Jay, the Usos. Well, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Listen, I love tag team wrestling. and Ironically enough, this was a great time for it in the golden era. And in the modern era, you had a almost a rejuvenation of tag team wrestling despite Vince McMahon's hatred apparently for it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, 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 I was like, right, how do I do this? Ooh, that'd be great. The Islanders are one of the most underrated tag teams in my opinion because Tama and Haku were just so good together. Um, what's great about this as well is if you wanted to, you could give them all managers. Ooh. The Heart Foundation would have Jimmy. The New Day would have Xavier. I would be putting Kofi and Big E in the ring. The Islanders have Bobby the Brain Heenan. And if you wanted to, you'd have the Usos with either Paulie or Naomi. It's up to you. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want to see? What do you want? What do you want, yeah. what do you want to see? Uh, you know, so, yeah, I mean, and for me, the, the winners would probably be the Usos. Um, oh, nice. Just because I think the Usos are one of the most blended tag teams I've ever seen. They. They are on another level when it comes to that. I mean, I don't know if it's the twin thing or if it's, you know, we've always said families are great together when it comes to wrestling and things like that. You know, brothers just understand what brothers are going to do. These two see the tear that to a whole new level. It's, you know, and don't get me wrong, it recently with the whole tribal chief thing, you've seen Jay by himself and it's made it work. But when Jimmy came back, it felt right. You know, it's. <laughs> Bobby said it during the breakup of the Rockers, but one without the other is just not right. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> so that's my, that's my, I'd say that's what my opening match. I think it'd be a hell of a match to see it watch as well. Um, I, I, I think that's a very strong opening. I, I, yeah, I, I think that's a strong opening, just in a different way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, all right, boss, how'd you follow the fatal four, the elimination fucking universal title match? Well, you want people to still be excited, but <laughs> you, maybe you don't want to like push them too much. Okay. So we're going to switch from star power to just have a good, good fucking match. Okay. So, second match of the night mm -hmm. for the WWE SmackDown Tag Team Championships. <laughs> it's the Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov versus American Alpha. That's dope. An American Alpha would definitely fall into that into that time span. I didn't even think they would. I thought it would be earlier, but no, of course not. That's a great oh, call. They, they formed oh, in, yeah. in 2015. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we, we, saw so, as, we saw them in 2016. Yeah, um, and, an American Alpha go over, winning oh. the blue, 
against the fuck against Sheeky okay, Baby I and Volkov, Nikolai yeah. Kolkov, hopefully managed by Classy Freddy Blassi. Um, <laughs> because I can't wait for him to put on his best Russian hat and tell the crowd to like, shut up and <laughs> listen to the Nikolai Volkov sing the Soviet national anthem. Yeah, yeah, and this is just a tag team match. Yeah. No, 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 no gimmicks. Just two teams. Off you go. That's a great shot. That'd be a good match as well because. Shiki and Volkov were an underrated team in this aspect of, like, yes. when you think of tag team wrestling in the 80s, you don't necessarily think of them. Um, yep. but yeah, that's a good show. And it, once again, it's one of those matches that will keep them going but won't have to, like, tire them out at all. Um, yeah. And American Alpha were just, oh, yeah. mwah, they were just so good. Yes. Um, but what about your second match? You had one hell of a uh, tag team mm. fatal fall when you kick off the show. So, what are you going to do for your fans next? What's your I'm gonna, second match? I'm going to bring them up to a whole new level. Oh. I'm going to bring them up to the super heavyweights. My second match is the eighth wonder of the world, Andre the Giant, taking on in a one-on-one match, the monster among men, Braun Strowman. <laughs> wow. So yeah, I mean, listen, everybody who's followed the show for the last four or five years knows my love for Braun. It's my baby yep. Braun. It's my big baby Braun. Andre, the name's in the, it's in the name. He's the giant. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> Aunt, a fair point. You know, we see what Braun could do with Big Show and Big Show was a bit more this point in time at that time in their careers Big Show was a bit more flexible a bit more agile could do a little bit more but Andre versus Braun and as long as Andre liked Braun which is a yeah. key fucking feature as long as yeah. you liked him you have no problem how, at all how, how could you not like that big goofball exactly I mean Mojo loves him them two get showers in the middle of the street apparently <laughs> Yeah, on their on their Instagram, their, their, their team NFG, no fucks given. Um, All right. And what they do is they they go out partying and have a good time. And one of the things there was a, a rain down fall, uh, fall even, uh, at one of the places they were out partying and they were wearing like uh, skimpy stuff anyway because Braun likes to show his whole body off apparently. Um, <laughs> and the rain put, when it poured, it looked like a shower, like a natural shower. So they yeah. grabbed some shower gel and had a shower in the middle. Like, still fully cold, <laughs> but they had a shower in the middle of the rain. A fucking mad man, the two of them. Who, who's going to tell them no? Exactly. Well, the police officers probably, but you know. I mean, <laughs> would they? No, they're not black. <laughs> Where's the lie? So who goes over in this matchup? Andre, the boss goes over. Uh, fair enough, fair enough. I can't, I've got to give it to you then. As long as Braun doesn't wear body oil. <laughs> no baby oil. <laughs> no baby oil. <laughs> and Braun brings him like a couple of bottles of red. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's. Listen, I, I like that. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Just, I like that a, a lot. It's, it's one of those hard hitting matches, too big. The attraction alone of that sells it. It's a marquee match? Mm hmm. That's yeah, a it's... strong. That's a strong uh, duo to begin with there. That tag team match, <laughs> and, a tag team match, and then that marquee match. It builds. It, you know, it, it builds. It. You know, you you know me. I like to try and build and build and build. Um, yeah. Especially considering maybe later on, I'm not too too confident in the quality of the match I have later on. Mm -hmm. But I know that I have great matches before it. You know, I'm going traditional yeah. golden era booking. If, and, yeah. that, and that'll probably explain to a lot of people what I'm going to do for my main event. Yeah. <laughs> but I yeah, mean, I mean, clue. listen. I'm, I'm clueless, but <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, I mean, I like your, I like your setup as well, though, because you've got that great tag team match after this one of those. Yeah. You know, you've done it I, kind of how Vince books now. Mm. Give them a great big marquee match at the beginning, lower them back down again, ready for the big lift up as, again. So, I mean, yeah. that's that, that's... It's smart. It's interesting how what eras of Vince we've seemingly have booked so far. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get. We, we are kind of rushing through this, which is surprising because the last one was like a four-hour show. Um, that being said, though, boss, what's number three? All right. 
So we've had a big star power mm. match. Then we had a just a good wrestling match. <laughs> now let's have a fight. <laughs> For the Raw Tag Team Championships. The Legion of Doom versus the Good Brothers. Oh, shit. And the Legion of Doom go over. Oh, of course. Wow. Because, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Hello, Hawk. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a, I mean, that's a good one. I mean, once again, OD, not on my card, and it's not because I don't love them. Everyone knows they're my yeah. favourite tag team of all yeah. times. Yeah, but, um, all times. <laughs> but it's, uh, it was just because when I think, 80, when I think 80s or early, and mid, early 90s, yes, that's when I was introduced to them, but I think of them in Jim Crocker, or I think of them in, around the world. That's the, the issue of being it's a historian. You know, yeah. <laughs> you don't always think, oh, yeah, I, I watched them in the WF for like a year and a half before this time period ended. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's a great one. And the Good Brothers, once again, didn't make my team, but that's just because I think of them in Japan more than I think of them anywhere else. Um, but that, yeah, that's a, that's a, uh, a slug, a slug fest that used to see a back there, dear. Uh, a blue chipper, as JR might call it. Um, <laughs> and the LOD going over, that makes perfect sense as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's. It's a strong opening you've got so far, boss. I'm happy with that. It's cool. Thank you. Cool, cool, but, cool, 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 cool. but what is your third match? Oh, I think I beat it, though. Oh, okay. I, I'm just saying, I, I think I beat it. All right, all right. You see, I, I had the, the Fatal 4 way in the beginning. <laughs> yes, you did. I had the Giants. Yeah, you did. And now we're going to go for just pure excellence. Uh... But you see, for me... My third match is Mr. Perfect taking on the Prince Finn Balor. <laughs> Told you so. <laughs> Listen to your shit. <laughs> that that might that might have just blown my entire car. <laughs> That literally might have just destroyed my entire card. Oh, and the because, prince goes over. Yeah, because, ladies and gentlemen, Balor's not on my card. Once again, you fought NXT, right? Or you just omit, no. omit, omitted by mistake sort of thing. It just an omission of yeah. just that's the way it turned out. Yeah, same with me. That was me and Cena. Like I said, when I wrote this card, I finalised it, and Cena wasn't there, and I'm going, oh, shit. <laughs> but yeah, Perfect versus Balor. Is my number three match. Balor goes over. Um, yeah. And by the way, I'm not going to mention titles on here. I have put them on the graphics so you'll see them. Um, mainly because I didn't write them down so I can't remember who what title matches. <laughs> Apart from the main event. I can remember the main event being a title match. Nothing else. I can't remember which one. Well, I don't think I remember properly anyway. And I don't yeah. want to say it now in case it's a mistake. So. Yeah, the graphics. That might yeah. see my, at the time of recording, mm -hmm. my graphics are done because... Yes. I, because Geek also doesn't know my card. Yeah. Once the show's over, I send him my card and then he does the graphics <laughs> yeah, yeah. for them. So I'll Please. be seeing them. The, I'll be seeing them for the first time with you, lot. So. <laughs> I, I love that my number three match broke. has just broken your card. Like I feel like I feel like it has. I feel <laughs> like I I don't know. I think if we, I think if the if the people listening mm. to the show. We're going to judge them. They'd probably be like, "That's it, bosses." Oh done. yeah, and please do do like, in the comments. Yeah, write which one you think is best. Tell us matches yeah. that we've missed out. Tell us yeah. if you feel as if there's some, like how have you not done this? Other than the fact that we've already admitted that we omitted some people, uh, <laughs> like just you know say say what you yeah. what you do in this time period, and obviously uh, yeah. we can get back to you on that stuff as well. But yeah, Absolutely. Uh, boss. In the words of my. Uh, my good friend Paul. Yeah. Follow that, my friend. I will. <laughs> I'll follow it with a marquee match. Oh shit! Mid-show marquee match. Here we go. <laughs> it's a two-on-one handicap, but not just any two-on-one handicap match. It's a ten-minute time limit, but not just any two-on-one handicap with a ten-minute time limit. It's an Andre the Giant Slam challenge. Andre the Giant versus John Cena. And Cesaro. But here's the kicker. The only way to win is to slam Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant could just beat the shit out of you yeah, and survive yeah. the 10 minute time limit. 
but John and Cesaro want to prove they are the strongest. So it's effectively the body slam challenge, just you've got a two-on-one handicap situation there as well. Yeah, and you've got That's... John and Cesaro yeah, yeah, trying to yeah. trying to outdo each other. So essentially, it's kind of like a triple threat. That's a yeah. That's a very interesting match, which I I love because I love your brain for matches. You come up with some great ones. Yeah, um, and uh, Cesaro goes over. John fuck. Cena tries. John Cena tries so hard, but he just can't do it. Can, we, can, I, can I point out that you you do have yeah. the Swiss Superman? Which right, listen, Cesaro was my boy. If anyone's watched yeah. the last few months, I've got this new merch all the way through. Um, mm-hmm. And I was bitterly disappointed at um, pay, uh, yeah. Backlash, sorry. But, yeah. can I point out that in this time period of Andre the Giant, yeah, officially, yeah. You know, I'm not including anything he did elsewhere, but in New York, he's been slammed by one man, <laughs> Hulk yeah. Hogan. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, and Cesaro does it again. <laughs> to quote Iron Sheik, <laughs> fuck Hogan! Yeah, well, yeah. Fucking motion! <laughs> but yeah, Cesaro goes over. And if anybody said, how do you know Cesaro's going to be able to do it? He walked with the big show. Bitch, please! Have you seen Cesaro... that man recently? That man has muscles where most people don't have muscles. I don't even have places. That, yeah, that motherfucker has to grow new limbs to store all the muscles. I, he posted a picture of the... The other day, I know it's getting it's getting off topic, but he posted a picture the other day on his Instagram about the Olympics, and it was him shredded. And he's like, I remember he goes, I, I'm always inspired by Olympians. I remember reading Kurt Angle's book and thinking I'll never be able to work out and train that hard, but I push myself every day, and this is what I've become. And I'm sitting there going, motherfucker, I did some weightlifting the other day. I know it doesn't look like it. In the middle of a fucking 28, 29 degree heat Celsius, um, which is probably, I don't know, about 90 odd Fahrenheit. Nowhere near. What is it then? Well, it's 27.6 in my room now, and that's 81.7 Fahrenheit. Well, yeah, I said 28, 29. 28, 29 is not 90. Dude, like 30 is like nearly 100. I'll wait. What was it? Twenty nine. Oh, it says say twenty nine. Yeah, that was the top of it. Eighty four point two. Yeah. When that when I was in the uh, the the state known as Florida, um, dude, dude. that that kept saying it was thirty three, and that was like it was one hundred and four. They kept saying it on the TV. Thirty three is ninety one. And the fucking idiots don't know what they're talking about in the weather. Yes, because they're meteorologists, not mathematicians. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. Couldn't give a shit. I think it's it's Florida! Florida. What did you expect from Florida? I was in the state of Florida. Um, what? Bitch, please. <laughs> but anyway, I, I, I did but some dude. work out in that, in that where, like they say, whatever yeah. it was, you know, 84 or whatever, uh, yeah. to our American audience, because that's the only ones that use Fahrenheit, really. Um, yeah. And I nearly fucking died. You're in Florida doing fucking workouts in your yard and garage. How is he not... Like, and he's like, yeah, I don't think I can push myself. Fuck you, Cesaro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I, I'm still a little bit nervous because of that Finn Balor match, I have to admit. <laughs> so, I don't, but I, I, I think my main event might help me with the odds there, but... I know you've got more matches coming up. So what is your fourth match after that fucking technical masterclass, that fucking showstopper oh. of fucking Mr. Perfect versus the Prince Balor? Well, I'm going to have an interval in my in my show. So after the fourth match, I'll have an interval and people can go buy the Hulk Hogan merchandise. Um, because that's what you do in 84. Well, 87 and 88 and 89 and 90. Anyway. I haven't got all day, Keith. <laughs> We've been on for like less than half an hour, dude. We have. <laughs> <laughs> so before my interval, I'm going to give them a match they're going to be talking about for the entire interval. See, I said the last match was excellent. You said it was a technical masterclass. No, my son, this is the technical masterclass. For you see, this match is Ricky... The Dragon Steamboat 
versus the GOAT, Daniel Bryan. <laughs> I might be able to make this back. I might. <laughs> I might. See, I, I took a gamble with a later match on my game. Oh. Uh. But no, that, that, just, that, that, that is money written all over it, unless your name's just me. <laughs> he who shall not be named. Um, but he's too busy wanking into a Hulk Hogan shirt. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat versus Daniel Bryan, to me, potentially could be the best match of either one of their careers if it was ever ever happened in real life. Um, and think about some of the classics them two have had um, separately. I mean, poof. but yeah, the Dragon, you know, ha this is coming fresh off his icy title run again after beating uh, Macho Man at Wrestlemania 3 um, mm -hmm. and Daniel Bryan this would be the yes movement the first iteration of the yes movement Daniel Bryan as well don't get me wrong still a great worker he had some great matches as uh, especially as the fucking heel um, mm -hmm. you know this would be a baby face versus baby face match was the only thing that would probably get a little bit lower rating because it's kind of you can't, it's really hard to do babyface versus babyface matches. It just is. Um, yeah. But I mean, even if I didn't do the, the Daniel Bryan as a yes mover, which is what in my head it is, because that was where to me when he was at his white hottest, you could do him as the the new Daniel Bryan, and that would yeah. still be a great match because of the because he's just he never lost anything in being a heel. Daniel Bryan never yeah. lost a single thing. If, if anything, his intensity turned up, and he was a bit more vicious. Um, yeah. But I mean. In this, in it, and in my head, I see Ricky going over the same way, kind of similar way to he did against Macho Man with a surprise pinfall, and we get a rematch in like a few months' time. Like <laughs> that's Very that's how I see that one, you know. Um, but I just, I said I was doing this, and I had like, I was like, how do I place this? And I was like, let's put that before the interval. And then even if they are worn out by that point. They've got the time to go the cool down and they can go, poof, what's going to happen now? Fair play. Fair fucking play. <laughs> Anything to comment on that match? <laughs> You're an asshole. <laughs> it's like you wouldn't want to watch that match. You're a fucking genius for an asshole. <laughs> genius. Yeah, I know. Okay, I'm going to go back and play Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Oh. Oh, if you just say that, that's, that's just with, money. That's if just you money. just say there, you're gonna fall back and go play Skyrim. Are we, are we falling into doing a podcast from our basement? By our basement, I mean me mother's. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I will see this through. I have, I, have, I, I still think I've got a good card. Yeah, yeah. I just listen. It's good so far. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, but you and I had a similar thought, but we went in a different direction. Okay. Because you mm. had a fourth match, yeah. then an interval. Yeah. I kind of made my fifth match, in a way, kind of an interval. <laughs> Is it a piss break match? Did you book a Did you book a dream piss match? No, <laughs> I booked a cinematic match. Oh shit! I booked a three-on-three -three summer cruise match. <laughs> Victory by throwing all members of the opposing team overboard. Yep. It's the New Day! New Day! Versus Money Inc., Ooh. which is Ted DiBiase and IRS and Jimmy Hart. Yep, yep, okay, okay. For the there's, manager in that, I love it when Jimmy has to get involved. Yep, and there's shenanigans on this big boat and everything. Eventually, the New Day go over. And finish with the dancing, having pancakes with the other passengers and shit like that. But it serves that basis of it could be a very entertaining mm. match for the folks at home, for the people in the arena that can watch it anywhere in the arena. Yeah. But they can also get the piss breaks of the loggers and stuff like that, and nobody's the wiser because yeah, you yeah. don't see the crowds. Very much so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it, yeah. So I basically made my fifth match. The interval match. Yeah, I mean that's a good shout, and I like the idea. For those who don't know, Boss has done a summer cruise a few times. Um, when we've been talking, when he books TW, 
He likes it as a as a as a cinematic it's a match. Sub- and, I know, like it. I, I like it as a super slab cinematic. Yeah, and to be fair, it sounds great because it's just a case of getting on a boat, they were yeah. on the cruise, and then just chucking people over, and you can do that safely. Like you can't yeah. just chuck people overboard safely. They don't necessarily have to be in the water. Like exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I mean that's great. Yeah, I, I do like that. I love the fact that Jimmy gets involved because we're being a cinematic match. You can do a bit more. Uh, hoo hoo and ha ha and gaga is the great Pat Patterson used to call it. Um, yeah, and the genius is I'd have him as the last person, <laughs> and the the funniest part would just be him running like fuck, trying to hide in places and fucking whatever. As a Benny Hill music played. No, <laughs> no because I hate that music. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm not going to hear anything but that music. Uh, no, I can't afford it. New... <laughs> <laughs> no but yeah, that's not that... public domain yet. <laughs> but like, uh, but you'll be able to have like guest spots on there. Like I haven't written any. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. But you could throw whoever you wanted in there. You could even have a Vince McMahon moment there, just going, "What are you doing on my boat?" It's like, "Oh shit, fuck what?" You Rubber know, so you have... the honeymoon suite. Yeah, I love you. Fuck Dave Meltzer. <laughs> I <laughs> love you. Yeah. Brother just Jimmy. Back, just hear a lot of muffled shouting, you know, in a particular door. And just some, uh, you know, way to work it out. Just, you don't want to go in there. There's a lot of really unsavory shit. And they just see Hulk Hogan's name on the door. <laughs> oh, boy. At this point. At this point, I don't know what is more surprising. The fact that he got caught on a sex tape making racist rants, or the fact that the other woman in that video was not Brooke Hogan. He is Trump-esque, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, mate. He, he, oh, I can't, I can't even... I'm, I'm <laughs> anyway, but that was my fifth match and technically interval. So, <laughs> Geek, your fans, they've had a fantastic interval. They've bought all their Hulk Hogan merchandise, I suppose. You know... <laughs> They're all excited, and you got to get them back in. You mm-hmm. got to get them back in for the interval with your fifth match. Mm-hmm. What are you giving them? A tag team battle, just straight up powerhouse <laughs> brawling that like you used to see back in the day. That you also saw with this particular modern day tag team as well. You see, my tag team match, and this is the final tag team match I have. Okay will be the British Bulldogs, David Boy Smith and the Dynamite Kid, taking on Cesaro and Sheamus the Bar. I just came. <laughs> because these two are very... I'm just going to move that quickly there. I sat up and suddenly I was out of shot. Um, these two are very quickly... Well, very quickly, they were my favourite tag teams. British Bulldog, David Murray Smith, for kind of obvious reasons. The bar for similar. And if you think about this, they're almost mirror images. You've got Davy Boy and Sheamus, who are the powerhouses who can brawl, and if have to, can get a little tentacle. And then you've got Dynamite and Cesaro. Hard-hitting technical wrestling. It's... I mean, this is, if this was on a Tokyo, don't have seven stars. Fuck Dave Meltzer. Fuck Dave Meltzer. <laughs> but yeah, and this would just be one of those ones where the crowd, as soon as they hit... And oh, by the way, Matilda would be at ringside as well, so you get some hoo-ha. <laughs> so, but yeah, the the British Bulldogs... It's, it, for me, this is actually hard for me to say who goes over, but I have a feeling it would probably be the bar. Um, nice, nice. Bulldogs That's versus... The, the Bulldogs versus the bar is just one of those things that... You could put it in either era, and the fans yeah. of both eras would be happy. Yeah, no, one hundred percent, mate. Like, yeah, like that's a stellar match. <laughs> like, you've booked it perfectly, and your explanation of it as well, fucking spot on. Like exactly as you describe it, it's like, yeah, just one hundred fucking percent. So, boss. What's your sixth match? All right. We've had a great Summer Cruise yeah, match, yeah. but I want people back in, and I yeah. want them back in fucking hard. So, <laughs> I'm going to give them an Intercontinental Championship match. Oh. But, but, no, no, no. 
Not just any. Okay. An eight-man ladder match. Holy fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Mr. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Rick Rude. Oh. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. The British Bulldog. Mm -hmm. Bad News Barrett. Bad News Barrett, all right. Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. Jeff Hardy. Yep. And The Miz. What I love about you is at some point you do this with your fantasy booking. Because you pick a title. Mm -hmm. And you then get champions of the era mm -hmm. that you love and like to see do more. And you go, that's going to be one match. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't always know how many are going to be in that until you finish writing the list of people you want to see. Yeah. Because <laughs> you did it with the US versus the Intercontinental, which was a masterpiece. Um, and this one is a very good match because you've got a little bit of everything there as well. Yeah. You know, you've got a little bit of the technical side, the extreme side. I would argue maybe Jeff Hardy was just outside of the, the best part of Jeff Hardy's era for I this agree. era. But still, it fits in a lot of match because what else are you going to do with Jeff Hardy? Yeah. Um, like but yeah, you've got the brutality of Barrett and you've got the, you know, the dog Ziggler who would have worked so well with Perfect and Rude. Can you imagine Perfect and Dolph Ziggler on either side of the ring selling? <laughs> they sell before they even touch. They were just looking at each other, just going, "I sell." No, no, you sell. Yeah. No, no, I sell. Oh, oh. Yeah. Where's it? That's your thing. No, oh shit. Um, <laughs> Don't knock out. Can we just get outside and see who hits us first? <laughs> like, the winner yeah. of the winner of this match, by the way, is the Miz. Yes, and because and I'm not really surprised with that because you have for. A, about 10 years now, as long as I've, well, as long as we've been doing the show, have had a very tumultuous relationship with The Miz, mm -hmm. but also have been one of his biggest supporters as potentially naming him the greatest IC champion of all time. Yeah. So I'm not all that surprised <laughs> by it. I'm just not. I'm not. Just, just, yeah. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm, like, well, I'm, I'm sitting here going, boss, we're doing a podcast. Come on. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think yeah. he has to be considered uh, at the very least. He has to be considered in the running. Oh, the he's, he's the Intercontinental yeah. Champion of all time. I mean, he's eight, he eight or nine time now. He's, I think he um, leveled um, Jericho, didn't he? He leveled him. He didn't have him beaten yet, but he leveled him. Honestly, off the top of my head, I don't know. I have to look it up. Yeah, I think he leveled leveled with Jericho on his last run. Um, but yeah, I mean. Listen, if you're going to go by runs and deers, he's definitely in the mix. If you're going to go by matches, he's probably in the mix as well because he's had some great IC title matches. Um, you know, obviously, uh, the rest of your list is strong as fuck, as I said, especially with Rick Rude being in there because Rude is one of those ones that if you put a ladder in there, you probably bend the ladder in half and bend it over someone's head. Like, <laughs> Rick Rude's just that sort of guy. You know, he's a great wrestler um, and a great man. It was a great, like, Specimen as well. Just looking at the man was was one of those things where you're like, Jesus Christ, dude! Like, have a donut. The same way you do. I, you look at Finn Balor. Have a fucking yeah. donut. <laughs> I can confirm that the Miz has eight reigns. Eight. Um, wow. So he has eight. Um, Jericho, Jericho nine, has yeah. nine. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, so the Miz has eight reigns, but his combined number of days recognized by the WWE as being champion is five hundred ninety-two. Whereas Chris Jericho's nine reigns is three hundred and eleven. Yeah, because Jericho was a lot of it were transitional ones, you know. Yeah. Um, I think I remember him having a couple of one day reigns and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a strong match to to bring that crowd back in and that excitement level up as well. Yeah. I don't know if you want to hear my next match. I probably don't, but I'm going to. <laughs> Are you sure? Let's. Just do it, man! If just you're gonna that, shoot me, shoot me! Just rip that band-aid off, eh? Just do it! <laughs> do it! Alright, that's a new picture for Boss's profile. Uh, <laughs> so my next match is uh yeah. Let's uh, I guess you could call these two greats. Two legends. I guess you could. Yeah. So taking Taking a look from history, this is one of the few that I thought of storyline-wise would work really well. But you see, it's Rowdy Roddy 
Piper taking on the legend killer Randy Orton. That's a good match. Because for the last three years, Randy Orton has been unfucking believable. <laughs> like, this guy is unfucking believable. He's just been fucking amazing for like, especially during COVID, where Randy was like, "I don't need a crowd. I can just do this." Like, yeah. <laughs> we're all going, well, "No, fuck you!" Like, <laughs> you can't be that good about a crowd. And then round, and then the hot rod, Rowdy Roddy Piper. And there was a storyline for those who may not be aware. It's kind of. It's kind of similar to what you'd see in real life, but Roddy Piper was famously aligned for a long period of time. Thanks for doing that on uh, recording, mate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hopefully, I can time that so it's you know the graphic is over it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Roddy Piper was famously aligned for a long time in his career with Cowboy Bob Orton, Ace uh, Randy Orton's father. Um, his dad, his papa, his cowboy. Um, so yeah, that would be the story I do it. Obviously, Landy Orton knows it has that history of the legend killer as well, which he kind of brought back briefly for a little while. Um, and honestly, this would this match is one of those ones that may not be a technical masterpiece, may not be the best in ring work, even though both of them are capable of doing it. But this is one of those ones that will tell one hell of a story in the ring. Because both of them, in my opinion, are top 10, if maybe top 5 in terms of ring psychology. Mm -hmm. Orton has this understanding that is next level. He just yeah. gets it. You, you can't argue with that. And Roddy Piper was the man that just knew how, when and where to make the smile. To turn a crowd, and even if he was heel, which he probably would be in this situation, Roddy Piper as a heel, he could smile at the crowd, and the crowd would go fucking mental trying to burn the building down. Yeah. If he was a babyface though, and he smiled, the crowd went nuts. Of oh, he's gonna fuck up. He's gonna fuck someone up right now. He is gonna yeah. get them. He's gonna end. Watch it. Hot Rod's going from Hot Rod's gonna get him. Yeah, he's gonna lose his fucking cool, and he's gonna blow the fuck up. He's going to go full Donald Duck on them. Oh, and <laughs> not far fucking wrong, is it, as well? I mean, uh, when Piper went nuts, he did sound a bit Donald Duckish. <laughs> what I loved about it as well, though, was even when Piper was a baby face, there was something wicked behind the eyes. Yes. And you get that same vibe from Randy Orton. Like, Randy Orton is, I guess, a baby face right now on TV, um, as of time of recording. This whole riddle thing, and you've heard me... And if you watch Bicycle or anything else, you've heard me say on Bicycle, when is Randy going to turn? Because you're just expecting Randy to just go, fuck you, Matt, RKO. Like, that's just yeah. gonna... And you know what? Here's the thing. He could do that, and because it's live crowds again, and they haven't seen an RKO in person for so long, because remember, he's not been on TV since the live crowds returned. Yeah. Randy Orton can hit an RKO, and they'll just go, RKO, yeah! <laughs> and then go, wait a minute, dick. <laughs> like, they'll pop, and it may not necessarily turn him a fucking heel. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, this pretend, this match itself, it just has story, and it has death, and it has, it has so much. And both of them could put a headlock on the other, and just look at the crowd, and, and not even say words, murmur it, so they, can't, they don't know what's being said. And the crowd mm -hmm. will just eat it up. It's one of those yeah. ma matches that is just so great that it's a shame that we're doing fantasy booking. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, I get it, I get it, and yeah, that is just a phenomenal match, mate. Phenomenal, nicely put together that one. All right, not beer, don't worry. It's only you know twelve o'clock. I, I give a <laughs> shit. All right, uh, boss, what's your semi main? Semi-main event. So I wanted something that would be, I think, entertaining. Yeah. But you don't want it to be, you know, like so over the top, so in your face that people are too tired for the main event. Mm -hmm. So you have to find that balance. And yeah. I think this does. So we're going for a mixed tag match. Oh, snap. It's Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch versus <laughs> Shawn Michaels and Sensational Sherry. I, I was wondering how you were going to get Becky on this card. Um, yep. 
Seth. It's not Seth. It's not Seth. <laughs> don't, get, don't get me wrong, this match makes a lot of sense. But yeah. this isn't getting Seth on the card. This isn't no. even getting Sean on the card. This yeah. is getting she- Becky on the card. It's getting Becky on the card. <laughs> because yep. if Boss is going to fantasy book anything, which I can't wait to see how he does, like, when we do TNA versus the Ruthless Aggression era and Becky Lynch isn't on either rosters, I can't wait to see how he gets her on that card. <laughs> well, put, put it this way, Becky Lynch won't be on it, you know? Mm. <laughs> I didn't think she'd make this one, mate. Um, no, that's a great match for like, the semi main yeah. because as you see it, it's got enough star yeah. power as well. Yeah. That it's, this... It chews that spot, but it's not going to blow the roof off the place. Yeah. Basically, this isn't a match. <laughs> this is a spot. This yeah, is yeah. a this is a segment. It's in the guise of a match, but we all know that this, it's going to be right. shenanig- it's yeah. shenanigans and stuff like that. And it's, it's just about guys, guys, who hides, ha ha, it's everything else. Yeah, it's by it's the way, a uh, match. Yeah, uh, by the way, of course, Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch win because my girl Becky wins. Um, but you know, <laughs> other than that, you know, but it's about no switching okay, music. No. Yeah, I mean, there could be a switch of music if Sean wants, but they're still going to lose the match. <laughs> Did she tap out Sherry or Sean? Because to you, it wouldn't really make a difference, would it? No, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have Becky tap out Sean. I think. Yeah. I don't. Too far, is it? <laughs> I mean, no. I just don't want to piss the viewers off. Because um, <laughs> in my head, absolutely. But, um, but no, the rules of the match don't yeah, allow for yeah, that. Yeah. So it's a mixed it probably, tie, not in agenda. Yeah, so it would be sensational Sherry mm. taking the loss. But again, she, and Sherry's you a know, good, you know, Sherry's a great wrestler in her own aspect as well. Yeah, you know, in her own but right. Of course, but of course, ninety two, like yeah, she, mate, she, yeah, she, she was ninety three. She had a, uh, you know, she, she, she did. No, she left a little bit in ninety two. Came back at the Royal Rumble ninety three. Yes. Um. Yeah. So you know, it, it, we're, she we're came back in uh, ninety ninety two. She left, and it was due to um. Uh, apparently a failed uh, suspension for weed. Uh, she didn't. Yeah. She didn't agree with it, and uh, so Vince said, "We'll go home." And she did. Uh, she came back to continue the storyline with Sean and Janetti in '93. '93, yeah. and she was there till about '94. She was because she was yeah. there at WrestleMania nine, so she was there the whole way through, and then she disappeared towards '93, '94, and she turned up yeah. on WCW TV in a full gown. But was Stinger makeup trying to entice the Stinger, or was it just a trick? Find out when he's got a bicycle. Um, he got a bicycle. <laughs> sometime in the future, because <laughs> yeah. we'll get there. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if I can get Becky on a card, I'm getting Becky on a card. And what I love Seriously. is that you waited through the semi-main. Like you waited. You, I was. You did. You were like, like you did the old swerve because everyone's sitting there going, <laughs> Becky's not on the card yet, and this is boss. Becky yeah. has to be on the card. He's been given the parameters. It's the mo- he could do any. He could put Wendy Witcher in there with her, or he could put Moolah in there and see if Moolah get her ass kicked. Like, but what he did was, oh, I'm gonna slip her into a mixed tag. Fuck you guys. Like, <laughs> fuck you. Fucking about- super. Like, I, like I give a shit. You know, just like Becky. Becky is the best. Becky number one. Couldn't give a fuck. I think C- Fucking. I mean, I think CJ not- might have something to say about that. I, like I give a fuck. You know, I would. I mean, I, you would. Yes. <laughs> but only, here's the thing. only if Miro was on the other side of the country, um, or world, he, maybe. <laughs> I mean, technically, he is. It's yeah, just unfortunately, but... CJ happens to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, here's, here's the thing. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, right? Fuck all y'all. Becky Lynch went. <laughs> yeah, it's cool, man. It's cool. I'm just white. I'm just uh, all right. balls. Geek. Geek, careful. Geek, semi main event. How are you showing me up? Oh, I mean, it's it's weird because this is the first time we've booked something very similar. Oh. In the way that we booked it, not at all similar. Um, the fact is, one person <laughs> from your match made it into my semi main event, and here's a clue: it wasn't Becky Lynch. Um, <laughs> But uh, it was her tag team fault. partner. It's not my fault you don't have taste. <laughs> it was the architect, <laughs> the king slayer, okay. Seth Rollins. And his opponent, 
the Macho King Randy Savage. Ooh, yeah! Bow down to the madness. Yeah. Dig it! Well then. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, the Macho King versus uh, Seth Rollins. Semi main event because fuck me, this would be mad. <laughs> Hmm. Honestly, my semi main event and main event came to me the moment I told you what we were booking. When I announced the show the last time and said it's Golden Era versus Modern Era, my main event and my semi main event went, We're here! <laughs> and I was like, Yep, that works. So, yeah, uh, Randy Savage and Seth Rollins, we all know what they can do in ring, we all know what they can do promo wise. And similar to this, the, the match before, I put myself, Piper, and Orton. This would tell a story the entire time as well. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, that is a fucking good match. Uh, like, and again, two different styles, but they could easily complement each mm. other. And, yeah, like, I first of all, I could see Seth just fucking loving this kind of oh. match. Like, Seth, was, Seth is of that era that... Of, well, of that generation that didn't look back on certain wrestlers in the back, in the the olden eras, the golden era, um, as just gimmicks. He looked at a lot of them and was like, look at the abilities that these guys have. And you can see he's very much like Triple H, where he took certain things from certain people. Not outrightly like uh, Jay, uh, they, with Randy that um, Punk and Jay Lethal did, mm -hmm. with their tributes to him. But he takes certain aspects of it. You know, you see certain... Maybe not the same move, but you see certain flows that are similar with Seth. And mm -hmm. for me, this has just got... I mean, if if it wasn't for my main event having to be the main event because of the way... A, the way I've booked, and mm -hmm. B, just because of how it's got to be the main event. When I announce it, you'll, you'll understand that. But, mm. yeah, this, this, yeah, this put this way. In the old days, you had A, B, and C house shows, right? You had the different yeah. cards. You had the A show was the Hogan show, B show was usually the IC champion, and uh, C shows were usually for really small markets. Right. This would headline your B show. Hmm. This would be the match that you would take around the horn to the places you weren't taking Hogan for, to sell out and get Hogan to sell out the next time as well. This is that match. Well, That's how well, good that match would be. Fair enough. And... Randy goes over. Interesting. Because you, you, you then build it to the can Seth, can Seth slay this king? Can he get yeah. it done? But Seth's great when he has a bit of yeah. doubt. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. That is a fucking fun old, yeah. <laughs> phenomenal, phenomenal. I love it. All right, boss. You had a very fun show. You snuck in Becky Lynch. You got yourself a cinematic match. You had a ladder match, for fuck's sake. What closes the show? What's your main event? Considering you had a very strong opening match, that would have been a main event in most places. This is a fatal four-way. Oh. So, first fall mm -hmm. to a finish mm -hmm. for the WWE Championship. Mm -hmm. Two heels, two faces. Okay. Our heels from... The Golden Era, mm -hmm. our faces from the Modern Era. All right. Randy Savage. Yep. Oh, yeah. Ric Flair. Woo! Drew McIntyre. Yep. Daniel Bryan. Oh, that is a here's, hell of a main event. Here's how it goes down in the <laughs> final moments. Randy Savage, he thinks, he thinks Ric Flair's down. Mm -hmm. He goes for the yep. elbow drop. Ric Flair rules. Yep. Randy gets up. Oh, my elbow. Fucking hell. Turns around. Boosh. Claymore. Mm -hmm. Drew McIntyre gets back up. He thinks he's ready to get the pinfall, but no. Oh, low blow for Ric Flair. Mm -hmm. Goes Drew. Rolls out the ring. Ric, he's about to laugh. Turns around. Doesn't even get the first ha out before. Boosh. Knee from Daniel Bryan. One, plus. two, three. Daniel oh, Bryan Randy becomes the WWE champion. Yes, yes, yes. A summer very, slam. Very cool uh, main event that is. Yeah. Thank you very much. 
a great finish as well. I, I saw that in my head as it was happening as well. But yeah, that's yeah, that that's perfect uh, way to finish your show. It's an exciting match. I had a great, mm-hmm. great bits that you can slow it down with technical aspects of it as well. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of star power, and mm-hmm. yeah, that's just. That's a great way to finish your one-off. You start off with a massive main event, uh, main event. You finish with a bigger main event, and mm-hmm. uh, and you get the babyface the win as he goes over, and Daniel Bryan celebrates with a yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yes. And I, I like that. I, it's good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. But now I'm nervous. Well. Geek has had Geek has had a phenomenal SummerSlam. It's been very well built. It's had matches in all the right places. It's had some really good storylines in there as well. And we've just had a fantastic semi-main event. That fantastic little, um, you know, King uh, Macho Man. Uh, sorry, the Macho King versus the King Slayer Seth Rollins. And now the fans are ready for a main event of a lifetime. It is SummerSlam. Golden Era versus Modern Era. Geek King, what's your main event? For the WWF Championship, it is the immortal Hulk Hogan (laughs) versus your tribal chief, Roman Reigns. Now, everyone heard me before say I am booking in an 84 fashion, an 85 fashion, an 86 fashion, so you kind of know what the main event's going to be. It's going to be the Hulkster versus a big bad guy. And they don't get much more bigger and badder than the Roman, than the big dog, the tribal chief, the head of the table. And this would be, would be, and I hate saying this, Hogan goes over because Hogan must pose. Listen, end of the day, I have booked this in a very, one of those fashions that you get a feel yes. good on the end. You do it. This is a, this is Vince McMahon in the 80s booking. Hogan wins. Hogan goes over. Doesn't matter how how hot the fucking heel is. That's what's going to happen. And I also said, you'll see why I'm giving you these great matches building up to it. Because yeah. this may not necessarily be the greatest match in the world. But it will be a match that every single fan in that arena is sitting and watching. Yeah. Because and, and listen, I don't want to give fucking anyone ideas here. I don't want to see this match today at all. No. But you tell me to do the golden era versus the modern era. I'm going to give you golden era fucking Hulkamania running wild. Python power made in the USA. Hulk Hogan. Versus your tribal chief, the head of the table, the big dog, the biggest and baddest that is available in the WWE right now. And I'm going to make it a marquee match and and I'm going to let Paul Heyman promo the fuck out of their building up to it. The whole stick can do is, we know some mean gene all he wants. And Heyman will just give you fucking spoiler after spoiler after spoiler. And this time, he'll be wrong. <laughs> 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 but yeah, um, that, that's, and that's how I end it, you know? That's how it should be. <laughs> that is a very, it, that is an ex, it, 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 as you said, it fits the theme yeah. of your SummerSlam. Like, and I think the good thing is, like, there is a clear kind of theme with both our mm, summer slams. Yeah. Yours, um, even though it's not the finish I'd like to yeah, see, yeah. I can't deny that as a as a main event, yeah. money. Um, based upon the eras that we're talking about, yeah, you can talk about uh, the modern day possession of Hogan, but we're yeah, dealing yeah, yeah. with the golden era Hogan. That's the thing you have to remember. Uh, it was the golden goose. Exactly. We're not talking about the... Fucking got caught making racist remarks. We're not the went and fucked over TNA and mm. stuff like. We we are talking about the people of that era, you know. And Hogan was as geeks is the golden goose. So that booking makes 
perfect sense because you are booking the golden goose golden era hulk hogan versus the yeah. monday tribal chief that you know it you know and that's what you have to remember and looking at it in that context that is a phenomenal main event thank you thank you very much you just yeah you just cannot you cannot oversell that as a main event and if you're thinking about it in the sense of oh Hulk Hogan's a dick, yeah, but we're not talking about the Hogan we know now. We're talking yeah. about the Hogan of then. Yeah, very was, important. Yeah, and, and especially during of... during that period of time as well. You know, there's a reason that for three, four, five years after Hogan left, Vince was still trying to find the replacement for Hulk Hogan. Hell, yeah. two years before Hogan left properly, or well, okay, not properly, but like for when we stop didn't. Let's say two years before he was a part timer for Vince, which was about 92, 93. Yeah. He was still trying to find a replacement for Hulk Hogan. The fucking Ultimate Warrior was a failed attempt at finding the next Hulk Hogan. Some yes. argue Diesel was a failed attempt. I argue differently, but that's for the new generation conversation we'll I, no doubt have at some point. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you, just for the record. Yeah. Bret Hart was. The opposite of Hulk Hogan, which is why he was given the opportunity. Because for a long time they struggled to find Hulk Hogan when they shouldn't have been looking for a Hulk Hogan. But in this period of time, Hulk Hogan was number one. One yeah. A or one one you didn't have a one A, it was as simple as that in this era. You had yes, a we... number two, a three, and a four. You maybe had a two A and two B. But you didn't have yeah. a th Hogan was by himself on a whole different category. The only option, the only diff only thing I would say, if you were looking at it and you looked at the world at that time and not just WWF, yeah, in the world at that time, the argument was always Hogan or Flair, who's the yeah. best in the world, that, and that wasn't because they were the, like Hogan was the greatest wrestler in the world, but Hogan was the greatest icon in the world. Yes. You know, there were, there's people that still to this day, when you talk about wrestling and someone says, when you go, oh, I like wrestling, what's that, WWE? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I used to watch that. That's the thing Hulk Hogan does. Yeah. It's all, I mean, don't get me wrong, these days you kind of hear more of a, oh, I used to love Stone Cold Steve Austin and Shawn Michaels. But there was a long period of time that when I was in my late teens, early 20s, people would still, like, especially older people, would still say, oh, I don't make him like Hulk Hogan, do they? And oh, at that point in time, I was thankful. <laughs> but in the same, as, as I said, it's one of those things that, yes, my, and listen, I've never been a Hulkamaniac, I never was. I enjoyed certain aspects of Hulk Hogan when I was a kid, um, but I was a Randy Savage guy, I was a warrior guy at the time. You know, that's who I was a big fan of, Bulldogs, you know. A lot of people that are on here that I was a fan of more. But as Boss says, you just can't deny the Hulk Hogan aspect. Hulk Hogan was the reason that on TEW, if you have a strong figurehead, you make more money from merchandise and attendance. You slap Hulk Hogan. Yeah. And here's the thing as well. The, the thing that I remember most from my childhood is when I put a videotape on of events, I did remember Hogan must pose. Because that was when the show ended. The show didn't end until Hogan posed. Yeah. Like, you, how many times do you see it on the clips all the time as well? You see about classic WrestleManias. For WrestleMania yeah. 1 to 9, Hulk Hogan was the last image you saw. And 9 was a huge mistake from Vince, but that's another story for another time. You know, yeah. WrestleMania 10 felt so weird to a lot of people because it was the first WrestleMania with no Hulk Hogan. It was the first WrestleMania with no Tito Santana as well, by the way. But nobody, but nobody mentioned that. <laughs> you know, WrestleMania 10 to WrestleMania 18 was how long we went without a Hulk Hogan sighting at a WrestleMania. And a lot of people say a lot of them feel weird. Like there's certain aspects that you're missing because you didn't have his face plastered on a poster somewhere. You know, to these days, it kind of feels weird when you don't see a John Cena, but not to the same level. Mm. If you were to have Roman Reigns right now, not be on a show, which he wasn't on Money in the Bank. We were both, well, sorry, not Money in the Bank, the, the pay-per-view beforehand. 
because the Hell in a Cell, because he had his Hell in a Cell match on Fox, because Fox wanted a fucking Hell in a Cell match. Yeah. That's a once again another discussion for another time. Um, but yeah, we didn't see Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is a champion, the Universal Champion. That's why we were like, this is weird. There's no yeah. But Hulk Hogan didn't need to be in a championship match. Hulk Hogan didn't need to be in any fucking match. He just needed to make a, an appearance, and it was a big deal. Yes. You know, we've, we've talked on He's Got a Bicycle about the fact that you would have tapings of four-hour tapings. And to keep people engaged and getting like going, it would be during the breaks of the tapings. It would be, and don't forget it, coming up is Hulk Hogan. And like... Yeah. The crowd would be amped. They would stay for the entire time. And once again, when the recordings ended, you knew it was ended because Hogan was fucking posing. Like, yes. that's just how it went. Um, you know, SummerSlams as well. SummerSlams were, you know, were Hulk Hogan shows. You remember seeing Hulk Hogan at the end of the shows and posing for the majority of them uh, up yes. until about 93, well, up until 93. He was left by that point. So, I mean, that's why he's there. That's why he goes over. Um, the rest of my cards... I think, Hulk, I think, honestly, I can say that main event would still be a great card. Um, I love your idea, boss, though, of giving them a, an exciting explosion and elimination match to start off with and then finishing off with a fatal four-way, which has a bit more suspense because it's the first fall that matters. Yes. Um, first fall is one fall, only fall. One fall. Um, one fall. You know, yeah. That's a great way. I like the way that you set yours up with the exciting matches here or there and then bring them down a little bit. You know, you do a good ebb and flow on yours. The only criticism like, that I actually remind is that there is maybe not enough ebb and flow, but that's why there's an interval. Um, yeah. <laughs> which, is fair, which is a fair comment. Absolutely fair comment. And I, I would agree with you. Like, there is... You could argue that maybe, um, you know, a tag team match could have been moved mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. And, stuff. and you could even argue that the the... Like the semi main event could be mm. in a different location, you absolutely could make those arguments 100%. Um, and that's the thing, hindsight's 2020. Um, when you you know you think you've got these things, and then when you're sitting down and talking with your colleagues about them, you're like, Oh, actually, no, that's a, a fair point. And like I said, I heard some of your bookings, and I was like, Fuck, <laughs> you know, and I forget, we're not even in a competition no, with each no, other, no, no. but you just suddenly feel like you're in competition because oh, yeah, yeah. like, you want your car to be best yeah and yeah. it's like yeah it's like you got Bala and I'm like I didn't even think of Bala like here's how here's how weird it was I didn't think of Bala until you said his name yeah. and then I'm like I don't have Finn Bala on my car <laughs> <laughs> like that's one of those omissions where you're just yeah. like oh uh? <laughs> just no, like, you didn't, you what, like what, 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 what oh shit yeah <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, but yeah uh -huh. there's, a, there's a few like you say that it's I think it's it's good. It's a good way. You've managed to get a bit of women in there as well. Here's my thing as well. This is just purely matches. Yeah. I'd have segments in here that would be promos as well that would bring the crowd down. Oh, Shit. of course. I probably somewhere between the Bala match and the the Steamboat match, or so third and fourth. I'd probably have a Brother Love segment. Yeah. Because I'd probably have Brother Love come out there and talk to somebody, and. You know, maybe a Ted DiBiase because there's a bit. I haven't got Ted DiBiase, and he was white hot in this era, like, mm -hmm. you know, which is I like the way that you brought him in with Money Inc. So you had a Ted DiBiase spot in there, which was a great idea. And um, the yep. cinematic matches. Listen, both cards, in my opinion, would be great to watch and a lot of fun to watch. Um, mm -hmm. The way that obviously they read is because it's just matches. Because I mean, we're not TW in it. Because exactly. we, so we're not putting promos in there to break it up. You know, we we all know Vince would have would have angles in here somewhere. He'd have fucking uh, video hypes that got you even hyped like, more than you were than you, when you're sitting in that arena. You know, this is to me. I wrote this out as kind of you know, it's a SummerSlam. You you see it on the graphics, it's a SummerSlam everywhere. But yeah, I wrote this out as a fucking what would I want to see at a house show basically. Like, yeah, exactly. If you have a limited time to go book a house show, this is what you'd want to watch, to be honest with you. Like, I, for me, this was somewhere between what do I want mm. and what do I think people would like and try to find the compromise. Like, for example, the, the mixed gender match is a compromise mm. uh, where it's kind of like, 
all right, I'm getting that, but I'm going to give you guys this. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's like my Vincent Manism. It's like, all right, I'll give you that. I'll give you that fucking main event that you want, but I'm getting Becky Lynch on the fucking yeah, card. Yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, I'll tell you what, I'm getting my cinematic match, but I'm going to give you LOD. Yeah. And fucking <laughs> what you know, it's like, yeah, I'll I'll give you all that, and it's like, and there there isn't a single match on either card mm. that I wouldn't want to see because. If you talk, if because even though I hate Hogan retroactively, mm. if you were able to create that match, <laughs> I would fucking watch it. I would watch a cartoon of that match. I would watch the anime of that match. <laughs> that, I mean, like, that match is kind of anime anyway. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's like you Dragon would, Ball Z. That's you, just six minutes of them standing you, there hyping themselves up while someone finally hits a move. You want a load of TW over 9,000 and put that shit together? Send me the results. I'll fucking look at it. You know what I mean? Like, that is just... You can't, like... The the promos alone, like, mm. where you hear... Because you've got Heyman, who will own any motherfucker on a microphone. Hogan dude is, what you gonna do? And then his robot's like, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'll tell you, I'm gonna do what I always do. I'm gonna smash them, I'm gonna stack them, and it's just like, and so you've got the that fucking Hogan, the, yeah, the Hogan never die, the Heyman, you ain't shit, and the Roman Reigns of, what do I care? Like, I mean, imagine got, as well, you, you can bring in that whole thing of Hogan being very close to some, the Samoans during the 80s mm-hmm. as well, you know, in mm-hmm. real life, bringing that into how close he was to the Anawais, because he was based in Florida, and a lot of the Samoans based themselves in Florida, yeah. you know? But yeah, you got some great stuff there. And as I say, you know, the compromise for yourself works great because you give because it still gives you a great show, you know? Yeah. But ultimately, it's not a competition. We're not going to see who no. gets the results of this. But yeah. you guys at home can tell us who you prefer, who you what matches you preferred, you know, what we missed. I mean, here's one that's glaring that I realised and I thought you were hyping up to at one point because you kept using the word phenomenal. Neither one of us has AJ Styles on it. Yeah, like, I just didn't... I couldn't find a place for him. Here's the thing. If this were like WrestleMania, (laughs) it's very possible. Yeah, a couple more matches, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But this is a SummerSlam and I was in a SummerSlam frame of mind. That's why I'm looking at Brawl Dog, you know, for example, like, I'm looking at... um, you know, um, you know, I, I wanted to get John Cena on there somewhere. Yeah. Um, you know, the '92 Undertaker. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong; I, I agree with everything you said about the Undertaker. Um, but there is no way I can personally do <laughs> a SummerSlam card and not have '92 Undertaker yeah, not yeah. on that card. Yeah, yeah. Just not happening. Not no, it makes it makes a lot of sense. And, and here's <laughs> yeah. the thing as well as we, you know. There's um, omissions. Tell us who you think we omitted that should have been out from either era. Tell us what matches you would have made up. Um, yeah. And, and you know, tell us what we're doing in the comments below. Um, yeah. And you know, we'll we'll get back to you via comments. Maybe we'll do a we'll have a look at the next time we do a fantasy booking. We'll look to, through some of them as well. Um, and what what other fantasy bookings could we do? Well, I mentioned it earlier. We have a one in, in mind that's coming up. We do have a couple that's coming up now. I'll, I'll mention them now. One of them that is the Rufus Aggression Era versus the TNA of 04 to 2010 era, mm. which is to me prime TNA, um, yeah. which because that does give, give you the inclusion of the MEM, it gives you the inclusion of AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian. You know it's. We are going to include 2010 itself, so it does include some of the signings that came in via Hulk Hogan and um, uh, Bischoff's debut. You know, the likes of Ric Flair or Mick Foley at that point in time as well. Sting, obviously, is going to be there. Um, and also, you know, your Jeff Hardys, your Ravens, your Rhinos, your, you know, your J E double F's, J A double R E double T. Ain't he great? My world himself, Planet Jarrett, Jeff Jarrett. Um, it also gives you, the, but it also gives you the likes of our truth as one well, truth killings. BG James, Kip James gives you the you know a whole host of talent. America's Most Wanted, Beer Money, 
how and remember though if you book America's Most Wanted you can't book beer money so you ha that's something that comes in mind as well uh, Ruthless Aggression Era John Cena Big Evil Undertaker Kurt Angle Rey Mysterio Eddie Guerrero Edge Christian Randy Orton Batista Triple, <laughs> Triple H Shawn Michaels Chris, Chris Ben Wee um, a whole host of guys there that is a future one we have in mind we also have an NXT which is pretty much NXT from the time it became on TV and I don't mean the competitions the NXT as NXT as we know it now right up until a about a couple of years ago, 2018 is the, the cut off on that one. So that's roughly, tw you know, that's going to give you all of your UE. That's going to give you the Finn Balor. It's going to give you um, Hideo Itami or Kento, as you as you know, to the rest of the world. It's going to give you like to Cesaro, Cassius Ono, Leo Kruger, um, all sorts of talent on there. Uh, you know, you got AOP, Johnny Gargano, and. Tommaso Ciampa DIY, you've got the likes of American Alpha, you've got the likes of um, Samoa Joe, Shinsuke Nakamura, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, all of them can be in there along with, uh, as I said, the UE, Candice LeRae, Charlotte, Becky, and they're going to be taking on the new generation, Big Daddy Cool Diesel, Razor Ramon, Shawn Michaels, Hunter Hearst Helmsley, Bret Hart, Ric Flair, Mr. Perfect, the one, two, three kids, the smoking guns, as well as everyone's favorite tag team, the Body Donners. I know you love them, don't you? As, along with that little, little minx at their side, Sonny. Um, Gold Dust, Roddy Piper can make it into that one as well. There's a lot of talent that sneaks into that era. That you don't realize, Savio Vega, one of my favorites of all time, Savio Vega, because he was always fun to watch, even if he didn't really do much in his career. R the Ringmaster is in that era. Hell, so is Stone Cold. You know, there's a lot of talent that makes it into that era. Owen Hart, the Bulldog, Yoko Zuna, while still somehow Hacksaw Jim Duggan and the Bushbackers. Um, you know, that's two of the fantasy bookings we've got. I know there's another one that we've got that we're working out the finer details on, and so I'm not going to say that on the show right now. But if you've got particular areas you want to see, and yes, I get it, we've just done fantasy booking and we're saying give us suggestions. At some point, we will do AEW versus WWE. We, we yeah, will. Absolutely. But not now. So, Gotta give them more time. Gotta just, give them a little bit more. Just, just let them build a build a roster that isn't yeah. kind of stacked heavy with former WWE employees. Like, but we will get there. Trust me, we'll get there. A lot of this does also rely on bosses' ability to not only know who the talent is in a roster, but also be able to research it well enough. Yes. Um, so if there's enough research he can do, he has no problem doing that. We've discussed this already. But it exactly. does rely on that being the case. On top of that as well, um, future TMOs, we've got a few things coming up. One that we're hoping to do relatively soon is what we call a pick and mix. And it is, we have a show, which will be one of the big four. And we can do a card of a certain amount, but we can only pick matches from the spots they were placed. And we yep. can't duplicate workers. Of course. So, so it's an added little uh added little will be a bit, that'll trickiness. be fun. That's where boss has to research a little bit. But so will I, because my knowledge might be great, but I don't always remember where certain matches were placed. <laughs> <laughs> well that match was there. That happened in uh, the Madison Square Garden in nineteen ninety one. Hell of a match. I think it was the main event? Everything was the main event then, right? Really <laughs> <laughs> kept telling me this could be a main event anywhere in the world, so it must be. Um, we've got that sort of thing coming up. We've got some discussions on our favourites as well. We like to keep them flowing. We've done flavour titles in the past. You can see that. We're going to do, uh, I believe one of the ones that we've talked about is like favourite uh, promos or angles. Uh, yes. We have them favourite storylines, but they'll be slightly different in the aspect that these will be just individual cases, not the overall story. Um, mm. So we got a lot of fun things coming up on TMO. Don't forget, you got he's got a bicycle. Uh, a bicycle. I get bicycle, but there's a reader. 
where we watch a old retro show from the uh, the back in the past. It could be any period um, of time. A lot of them are random. However, we are in the moment enjoying a lot of Jim Crockett promotions because it was something boss la latched onto, and we went fuck it, let's do it. So. <laughs> that will be our next retro one, which will be September. We are taking a, a slight break in August uh, for retros, but in September there will be a Clash of Champions coming your way. The next modern one will be SummerSlam 2021, which already looks really fun. Um, yeah. It'll be interesting to see how they do that. And obviously it's going to be a huge stadium with a jam-packed sold-out arena by looks of it. Um, so that'd be a, just a hell of an environment and atmosphere. We're looking forward to that. After that, the next retro one, uh, sorry, the next current one will come your way in October. Uh, we are going to take September off for the re for the current one, just to give a bit of a break. It will come your way in October with a couple of shows then. Um, other than that, do look out for all the things on the show. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, everything else. Share us as well. You can find all our beautiful merchandise like my. MIA logo and Boss's Pro Wrestling but Anti Confusion t shirt, uh, which is always nice to see Boss rep in the merch. Um, and you can find them at our shop, which is geekking.redbubble.com. That is g3kking.redbubble.com. And of course, you can find myself at Geek Streams on Twitter. That's g3kstreams. G3kstreams on Twitter. Uh, you can find me on Twitch at Geek King, and all the links are in below. Boss, you can find him at Steve Jones three one three, pretty much everywhere in the universe. Um, it's good for what else you want to get. The links are below, including Boss's own personal channels, um, which does have some access to our retro total markout. So if you want to go back and watch some of the retro ones, you will find access to there. Or at the end of the video, yes. there will be a little square you can click on there, and you can get the retroactive TMOs. Um, yes. Other than that, I think that's about it, Boss. Anything yep. else? Uh, no, that's pretty much everything. Once again, guys, we do love to hear what you guys have to say. What did you like? What were you not a big fan of? Uh, are there any kind of mix and matches you would do with our cards? You're yeah, like, okay, well, show. I like Geek's idea here, Boss's idea there. What matches do you think is a sin that we didn't <laughs> include? And ultimately, what ideas would you like to see us uh, tackle on TMO in the future? But all that's a one. Say, here's one for yeah. you. Yeah. How about you tell us what your match of the night is on both cards or overall? What would yes. you think would be the show stealer? Um, uh, that's an excellent shout, sir. Yes. Excellent shout. So, boss, you were saying just about the same before I cut uh, you off. I do apologize. Oh, no, it's absolutely fine. Um, all I'm just going to say is um, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, you know, it's one of the things, you know, a lot of people get into podcasting because they want to make a lot of money, they want to get really popular. We do this shit because we just love the idea of chilling, getting to talk about stuff that we're passionate about and sharing it with you guys. Yeah. You know, what we don't want is to be these fucking shell outs that just fucking tell you to get NordVPN all the fucking time <laughs> and but, don't give a shit about your opinion. We that being care about your... I mean, that being said, if we do get sponsorships, I'm not objecting to that. Um... No, 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 absolutely not. But, um,. Basically, you know, we care about your opinion. We care about, you know, engaging with you guys. Uh, uh, so we sincerely hope that we are able to put out a product that you guys enjoy. That's why we want your feedback. Yeah. We want, want to know what works for you, what doesn't work for you, and that can help us move forward. I, I mean, we, want to, interact, coming, we uh, want to interact with you so much that we're working on a Discord server just to get that I would, to get going. Yeah, so hopefully I, I was, that's the case, I was you know? literally, Yeah, I was literally just saying that. I'm continuing to build uh, the MIA Discord uh, it exists, but it's not fleshed out yet. Yes. Uh, once it's fleshed out, I'll be giving it to Geek for the, mm -hmm. the go-ahead to make sure he's happy with everything. And then we'll launch it and be like, right, everyone, join on in. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing. We want to be interactive with you guys because to us, if, listen, total mark out is one thing. But we call ourselves a marks because that's what we are. We're fans. We're full-on yes. marks. We don't give a shit if mark is a term that has been used as, oh, we've hooked them. Listen, hook me. Yes. Take my fucking money, but just make it good. Make, make <laughs> me believe. So, Let me tell you something about so so something about being a mark, right? One of the greatest advertising slogans of all time was "You will believe a man can fly." Yes. Superman. Yeah. Make me believe. 
And uh, that's all I've got to say. Yeah. And on that note, I've been Geek King the Cash uh, Brew. That has been Boss Caulfield, Steve Jones, three one three, and this has been Total Mark out. Marks out. Um. I.